In the upcoming video I will talk about how to keep your house cool during summer, with the pond and with the garden. We build houses that consume less energy than they produce, so in today's video I will show you how to use the pond and how to use the garden to cool down your house with the thermal mass of the earth. Let me show you the numbers, like how to use thermal mass to cool down your house in the summer. So we have two options here, like one, that we have something that's like really really cold, for example the temperature of ice, or we have something not that cold, but we have like volume, we have like mass. And I want to show you like how we can use the volume, like the mass of the pond, or like the mass of the earth beneath the pond, or like near the pond, to capture, it will be like cold enough to cool down the house. So okay, let's check the thermal mass of the pond. Let's say we have like a 15 meter or 50 meter pool. That's like 49, like 50 feet or 50 feet. That means the area is like 225 square meters, like 2400 something square. So the conclusion here, if we have like a one meter deep water, that's like, uh, oh, I don't know if it, but like I think three, I, I'm not sure here, like that level. That means we will have 225 tons of water. <laughs> That's a lot, like let's say 225 cars, the weight of that. So trust me, that can store thermal heat or even the water is like not ice cold, but it's like way cooler, like the bottom of the lake, it's way cooler than your house. So if you put like some pipes in it and you start to circulate the water and you make an exchange, that means it will be cold enough to cool down your house because you have like 20, 225 tons. Before I show you how to cool down your house in the summer, let me show you how much energy the sun has. So what we have to counterbalance, like counterfight. So we can calculate how much energy the sun has. Usually when you're going up to the mountains, the sun gets more energy, let's say like a 900 watts, like a hundred, uh, a thousand watts per square meter, that's like 11 square feet, something like that. And when we are going down to the seaside, it's going downward because like the atmosphere is thicker. So let's calculate like in an average, like 800 watts per square meter, that's like 11 square feet. So let's say we have like seven hours of like sunshine a day, like let's be like uh, optimistic here. That means every square meter we have like 5,600 watts. That's like every square meter for a day. That means if you are calculating with the pond, let's say the area of the pond, that means like 50 meter or 50 meters, like 50 or 50 feet, we have like 1,260,000 watts per day on that area sunshine. Sure it will go away and the wind blows out the heat, but just imagine how much power the sun has, like it's like amazing and we have to counterfeit that. So how to keep our house cool during summer? Let us continue with the logic with the thermal mass. As we've seen the pond has like 225 tons. Imagine like a sumo championship where fighters are fighting and they are pushing each other out. So the 225 tons will win against your house because your house even with the walls with the concrete your furniture it's not even close to that and we and we're not even st stopping at the pond the pond is directly communicating with the earth beneath it let's say a meter like 11 feet that means if one square cube of earth has like 1300 kilograms that means like the same area it would be like 200 92.5 tons, see? So 225 from the water and like 292 from the earth itself. So here we are at like 500 tons of thermal mass. And trust me, that's like way, way, way more than your house. So if the temperature is slightly, not more, but slightly less than the room temperature that you want to achieve, that means if you start to circulate water, like in pipes, that means it will cool down your house easily because you have so much volume, you, like it's like extraordinary big amount of like storage here that we don't need to have like a really, really, really cold temperature, you know? See the logic here? And we can even continue if that's not enough because you say you want more or you don't want to be at the pond and you want to 
save the garden, you have another option. You can put cables, like the electric cables, probably you know they are like the cheap electric cables. So not the water pipes, but like the cheap electric cables, it's like one inch, like two, two and a half centimeters. And they're like really strong, they are made to, you can put, you can pour concrete in it. They are like, you buy the high-end models and you can put that underneath the earth. And what will happen? In every one or two meters, you put one of the cables under the earth. And the best part is like the electric cables. And again, not the cheap version, you have to buy the version that you can pour concrete on it. So it's like the high-end version of the electric cable and it will resist the pressure of the earth and it will be like way, 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 way cheaper. And the main idea is not the volume of the water that you have under the earth, but the thermal mass of the earth that it can grab. So let me explain it a little bit. Let's say with the piping you have two versions. They put pipes like that, like four inch, like 10 centimeters, and they put like a lot of water in it. And they say, oh, if it has a lot of water in the pipes, it will cool down the house faster. However, it's not true because if you start to circulate the hot water in the pipes after like one, two, three, four hours, the earth near the pipes will start to heat up. So its efficiency, it won't be that good because it can't grab the cord. And the big pipes, like the water pipes, like the four inch, like these ones, are like really expensive. And it's not that cheap to lay them down. And it's not like you can put in the lake because it, it costs you like a lot of money and it's like really hard to like fix them and, and you have like a big machinery to just put them there. And the small pipes you can just put near the like the electric cables you just can put at the bottom of the lake. Like one version, that's, that's the cheapest version and if you have a problem you just uh, take them out. You don't have to modify nothing, you don't need an excavation system, you don't need to pay anybody. You can do it at home alone actually. You don't need anybody for help. And the other version, when you're like putting the cables under the earth, it's way cheaper as well because you don't have to dig out like a really, really, really thick uh, hole, five centimeters, like two inch. The thing that nobody thinks about it is like the volume of water, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that really, really matters, and I think that's like the 98% of the thing, like the vicinity of the pipes how much earth can grab that pipe, you know, how much thermal volume it has access your circulated water, because if you have like a four inch like that diameter or you have that diameter, the end result is the same if you think about it, because after like three or four or five hours, it will be the same. So why not to buy more cables, the cheap versions, you know, like the really narrow, because it will be like way, way, way more efficient and it will be like cheaper to circulate the water in it, smaller pipes and everything will be cheaper because the digging will be cheaper, trenching it will be cheaper, you know, like replacement of it, it will be cheaper, it will be easier to uh, dig a hole, it will be easier to put it underneath the lake if you want to do it, like in the lake. So everything is better. Let me show you one thing here. So let's say now we are not making a lake or we are doing it like near it. We are talking about the same area, like 15 or 50 meters, that's really small, like 161 uh, feet. And that means the area of the garden is like 225 square meters. And if we say 2 meters is affected, like let's say that's like the level of the pipes, and we are thinking like 1 meter above and 1 meter below, because it communicates like both ways, that means will have like 450 square meters of uh, earth and uh, the earth weight is like 1300 kilograms per square, square cube. That means we'll have like 585 tons of thermal mass that we have like direct access to it. And the odds are, and the odds are is that <laughs> earth that we are talking about, it will be like way, way, way cooler than the room you want to go down. So if you circulate the water, it will be way more than enough to cool down your house. Like it's not even a joke, like it's not even a race. Like what do you think here? Like 585 tons. That's a lot. How much your house is like <laughs> 10? Sure, I'm exaggerating here, but it, you can't even compare, you know, like it's like the difference is huge. 
So that was today's video and usually I will talk about real estate and how to get things cheaper, how to cool down your house cheaper, how to heat up your house cheaper and uh, how to be at premium houses or premium real estate for cheap. So that was today's video. I was talking about how to cool down your house in the summer. Probably I will make a series about it. And that was it. Hopefully we'll see each other in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.